Welcome ladies and gentlemen back to another Genshin Impact video. This guide will teach you how to optimize your time and resources spent early game for an optimal experience. I will focus on a free to play basis so my first focus will be… re-rolling. Since this is a gacha game, many of you will know how this works. You get resources to buy a banner and you may or may not get what you want. That thing can be either a weapon or character in this game. The reason why you could re-roll is to get an early 5 star weapon or character. During your tutorial, you get 10 acquainted fates that you can use to buy your first banner. If you like what you get, good, continue with your story. But if it's not even close to valuable, consider registering a new email address to get another chance on something great. Bear in mind, MiHoYo is taking charge against rerolled accounts on sale. So don't use emails that do not belong to you, nor trash email addresses. These accounts could be banned even if you are legitimately playing on them. A reroll can take you 15 to 20 minutes and you could very well do an average of 8 rerolls until you get something awesome. This is a PvE game, so a head start has no particular value. It's only your dedication to a particular character or weapon that can incentivize this. Exploration The map of Genshin Impact is vast. You will look at the map and instantly want to check out the corners of the region and unlock the viewpoints, though this is something that you really need to do. You should first play through the story a bit further before you start doing that. The world of Teyvat holds many locations with puzzles that need an elemental discharge to activate. The free to play party you unlock has these elements. So once you unlock a character named Lisa, ara ara, you're good to go. Exploring will let you a lot of viewpoints, unlock chests, dungeons, statues, etc. These will increase your adventure rank real quick. Mark your locations. While we're on the subject of exploration, Genshin Impact has a nice feature of being able to mark your map. By opening your map and clicking a location, you can set an icon and even name it. You should mark locations of oculi, named enemies, gathering spots, and stuff like that. It can be real easy to forget a spot that you've passed before, where something or someone special was locked behind an elemental puzzle that you could unlock later throughout the game. Marking resolves this issue as you can easily find it again. Don't sit on your resin. Resin in this game is a refresh over time resource. You can open up Leyland outcrops with 20 resin. These are rift looking things that will spawn a couple of waves of enemies for you to slaughter. You will gain adventure rank experience, character experience materials and mora. You can also unlock domains with 20 resin. These are the dungeons with puzzles that can net you a couple of items and experience. It's not recommended to only do these just to use your resin though. The extra rewards are RNG based, so only do these with a specific reward in mind. This game has a couple of elite bosses called Hypostasis. These bosses are aligned with a specific element and upon defeating them will spawn a blossom that you can open with 40 resin to receive a reward. By default you get 200 adventure experience, some mora and companion experience depending on your world level. Lastly, there are weekly bosses for you to defeat, Andreas and Dvalin. Upon defeating them, they will also spawn a blossom that you can open up with 60 resin. The rewards will also vary depending on your world level. World level accumulation on Sunday. While we're on the topping of weekly bosses and that world level I mentioned, you are able to level your world level by leveling your adventure rank. For instance, you are world level 0 until you reach adventure rank 20. And between adventure rank 20 and 24, you are at level 1. So every 5 adventure ranks you will gain a world level. In that case, you could defeat these world bosses at any time during the week, but you are also able to keep on leveling during the same week. So if you decide to best the boss on Tuesday, be sure to wait until Sunday to gather your rewards. You might level up a world level and get better rewards. Doing expeditions on long pauses. You can send your party members to expeditions to farm specific materials or resources. This can be done on a time basis of 4 hours, 8 hours, 12 or even 24 hours. Keep this in mind to send your party members to expeditions whenever you quit your game for a long period. When you go to sleep for example. Also, if you have a buttload of characters that you don't use, send them to expeditions 24-7. Level priority. If you're stuck on deciding what to level, consider prioritizing weapon levels first. It's really important to level everything somewhat evenly, like dungeons require an average level from your party. Say that your main character is level 50 and the others are level 2, then your average level is about 14, which won't allow you into a level 20 dungeon. On the other hand, leveling your characters first while wielding a level 1 weapon isn't effective as well. So prioritize weapon leveling over character leveling 
but also try to distribute it evenly unless you hardcore play a single character. With all of these things said, you will have a great awesome knowledge base to start the game optimized for the win. Are you planning to play this game free to play? Consider subscribing because I will be creating a free to play guide on this channel. Ring the bell as well to get notified when such a video drops. Thank you for watching this video in its completion you absolute legend. Leave a like as well so others have a chance to see this video as well. This was Galaxy Brain Glitchy, have a good one.